Good morning, students. I'm Mr. Buscherini, and for our unit on exploring contact and non-contact forces, today we're going to finish our exploration of magnets. In the previous part of this video, we looked at magnets. We looked at how a bar magnet can or cannot attract different objects, and we nailed down to very few materials, not free magnetic materials, which are iron, cobalt, and nickel. And then we looked at what happens if we bring two magnets together and we come out with this law which says that opposite poles will attract and same poles will repel. Now magnetism is a very clear example of what we call a non-contact force because it's a force that doesn't have to touch the object in order to act on it, it can act at the distance. Of course, this will depend on the strength of your magnet. And now I have a question for you, uh, because we have studied uh, forces now for quite a long time. What other non-contact forces do you know? Just, just pause this video for a second. Think, okay, when did we also find other forces that don't need to touch the object in order to um, have an effect? And if you thought about gravity, yeah, that's right. Gravity is probably the most famous non-contact force. Every time you have an object that drops down, it is because of a force of gravity to Earth, but not because the Earth is touching that object, but because it's acting at a distance. And if you want an even bigger example of that, think about the Moon. The Moon is orbiting the Earth because it feels the force of attraction from Earth's gravity. Or on an even bigger scale, think about the Earth and the Sun. The Earth is orbiting around the Sun because it feels the gravity from the Sun. So these are all examples of non-contact force. But in the previous part of this video, I also told you that today, uh, now we were going to see also an effect, uh, a nice application of the fact that same poles repel. And this is what we call magnetic levitation. Uh, together with my video, I will also link another video that shows how a guy uh, built a levitating platform using very strong magnets. I don't have that with me, but in a few seconds, you will see a nice application of uh, uh, magnets and see how you can make magnetic levitation. So today I have a different kind of magnet. This is called a ring magnet. It's made of ceramic. Again, it's very brittle, okay? And it's a bit more powerful than the magnets I've used previously. And uh, a few times back, I, I bought the, uh, I made this object, okay? Which allows me just to put a ring magnet through it, okay? And you see why, uh, and you're gonna see why I did this in a few seconds. Because what I'm going to do, I'm taking another ring magnet, okay? And normally you should test this before to see. Um, um, another thing I forgot to say, in, in, this kind, in this kind of shape, the poles are this size. So this, for instance, could be the North Pole. This is the North, South Pole. I don't know. They're not labeled. But let's see. And I already test those in order to see that I will have opposite poles coming together. And... What you can see, and I can drop it also a little bit, you can see now these are same poles and they're repelling each other. The net effect is that this magnet is levitating. If I push it a little bit downwards, it will go back again, okay? But now, let's see if I add another magnet, okay? So again, I have another ring magnet and I will add it here. Okay, and as you can imagine, I already tested before. And let's see what happened when this goes down. First of all, you can see that this magnet, the second one, it's pushed down a little bit. It's still levitating, but it's pushed down. And this one is levitating in the top. And it's also nice to see what happens if I take this and uh, pull it up. Okay. Okay, but well, let's make things even more interesting. Let's add a fourth one. Okay, and as you can see now, this one, the second one, is really pushed really almost to the bottom. Okay, this one is pushed down and this one is living nice. And what you can do again, I can push this up and they all come together without touching. Remember, non-contact force. 
If I pull this up, first of all, you see the second one. Now it's not pushed down anymore, and I can push this up again. Um, and I can push this even forward with the fifth and last magnet. So I'll put it down here. And now what would happen? The last one is almost, almost touching, almost touching the first one. Okay. But they're still levitating. Now you can see they're not really touching each other. Okay. Um, with a very similar effect, this is how magnetic levitation trains work. Although, in this case, they don't use this kind of magnets. We call these kind of magnets permanent magnets. Uh, mag magnetic levitation, they use a special type of electromagnets. We're going to learn about those later on. And more specifically, they're using superconducting electromagnets. Now, let's finish by taking our ring magnets away. Okay. And this was just to have a little bit of fun with magnetic levitation. Okay, so that's all for today. And I hope you enjoyed it. And goodbye from Mr. Buski.